Hey everyone, welcome back to another Astroveo educational video. So you've probably seen circulating the internet this uh, morning routine by this influencer Ashton Hall, and um, it's been making the rounds because of how ridiculous and silly <laughs> it is. It's very extreme. He wakes up at like 3.45 in the morning and spends like five hours doing nothing <laughs> um, except dunking his head in ice cold Saratoga and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I won't get too much into the details of why this video is totally ridiculous, but um, there is one thing that I thought was especially funny, um, which is uh, it's a part of the memes that's been making the rounds. Uh, in particular, there's this bit in his morning routine where he uh, takes a dunk in the pool, and uh, he, uh, based on the timestamps, he seems to suggest that the time <laughs> between when he starts to jump in the pool and when he lands in the pool is about four minutes, which is super silly. Um, but, you know, we're a bunch of physicists here at Astroveo, and so it kind of got me thinking, uh, you know, how high would that jump have to be in order for it to take four minutes between takeoff and landing, as it were? Um, and this is actually a, a pretty fun kinematics problem that uh, I thought it would be fun to walk through. Um, so, uh, as it goes with kinematics, we're going to use a couple of our standard kinematics equations. Um, the first being that a final velocity is equal to an initial velocity plus an acceleration times time. And then the second equation that we're going to use is that a distance traveled is equal to a velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. And so with these two formulas, we can get an idea of how high <laughs> Mr. Hall would need to jump in order for it to really take him four minutes to land in the pool. And we're gonna make a couple of assumptions. I'll draw our uh, scenario here. Um, first, uh, I'm gonna assume that the ledge that he's jumping off of is approximately the same height as the water. So uh, here's our Mr. Hall. He's got, you know, big muscles, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> and he's gonna jump into the water and I'm gonna just approximate that uh, the height of the water is the same as the height of the ledge. Uh, the second thing, we're gonna let's label some variables. We'll call the height at the peak here h, and the time it takes him to get to the peak, we'll call tp. And now he'll have some initial velocity. So he's gonna jump with some initial velocity, and we'll say that that initial velocity is uh, vx in the x direction and vy in the y direction. And this is something like, you know, meters per second. Um, okay, so <laughs> what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna figure out how long it takes him to get to the height of the peak, uh, of the height of his jump, and then uh, we'll double that to get the time back down. Um, and uh, after that, we can use that to solve for a relationship between the time of the jump, the total time of the jump, and the height of the peak. And since we know our ideal total time is four minutes, we can therefore solve for the height. So um, let's uh, let's jump jump into that. No pun intended. So the first thing we want to do is get a time for the jump to peak, and we can actually use this first formula uh, equation one here. So we know what the initial velocity is. Let's uh, rewrite this formula. So it's v f is equal to v i plus a t. Now we actually have a bunch of knowns in this. So our v i is simply uh, is simply his initial vertical velocity, so it's vy. And our acceleration is just the acceleration due to gravity. It's about negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We'll call that g for now, and we'll plug in numbers at the end. And then finally, uh, our final velocity we know as well. So we know what the final velocity is because um, at the height of the, 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 the top of the parabola, the velocity is going to be zero because it goes from a positive velocity to a negative velocity. So it's got across zero and it does that at the height. So VF there is just zero. So we can actually plug everything in here and solve this equation. So we have zero equals VY plus G times T and we'll call this TP for TP. Um, and if we solve this, remember we want a TP, we subtract VY from both sides and we find that negative vy is equal to gtp. Now we just divide both sides by g, and we're left with our peak time is equal to negative vy divided by g. So we've now got a nice velocity to time 
peak time formula. And the question is, uh, can we relate TP to height? Sorry, my handwriting is awful. H. Uh, so that's our next goal. And we can with formula number two here. So let's rewrite that down. And we have this D is equal to VIT plus one half AT squared. Okay, so we, once again, our VI is just uh, VY and uh, our acceleration is just the acceleration due to gravity. And But now we have T is our peak time. Um, and uh, note, by the way, that our total time, we can call that maybe T, T for to total time, is just two times this. That'll be important later. Um, but okay, so uh, we've got our initial velocity, our acceleration, and our time to peak. And now finally, D is just H, which is the quantity we would like to solve, because we'd like to be able to get this expression, TP, in terms of the height. So let's plug everything in. We've got H is equal to V, sorry, V, Y, T, P, plus one half G, T, P squared. Okay, so can we simplify this further? Well, we have an expression for T, P. So let's take that and plug it in. Um, so that's H is equal to, and we have V, Y, times negative V, Y over G, plus one half G, times negative VY over G squared. So we can see here we've got negative VY squared over G in this term, and over here we've got one half, and it looks like we have uh, negative VY squared, which is VY squared, and then times G over G squared. So this is just gonna be divided by G. And so what we actually have here is, uh, if we simplify this out, we can, um, you know, extract this factor of VY squared over G, and we have negative one plus one half, and that's VY squared over G. So negative one plus one half is just negative one half, negative one half, and so we're left with negative one half VY squared over G. And so this is our expression for the height. Now this is really handy because uh, G is a known, Height is a quantity we want, and Vy squared we already have uh, in this expression. So if we just solve for Vy over here, we can, uh, if we solve for Vy in terms of h, we can get our expression for the peak time in terms of h. So let's do that right now. So if we want to solve for h over here, just multiply by negative 2. This will give us negative 2h is equal to Vy squared over g. And now let's multiply by g, so it's negative 2gh is equal to vy squared. And we take the square root of that, and we have vy is equal to the square root of negative 2gh. Okay, so now we want to plug in this vy into uh, our expression for tp. So uh, we have tp is equal to negative vy over g. Now the negatives are actually going to end up canceling here. So G is normally negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, but I'm going to treat G as the absolute value of this and just absorb this negative into that. Um, so the negative of, uh, of G is going to be a positive number and we, end up, we want time to be positive. So I'm going to say that TP is equal to VY over G, knowing that we're going to be inputting the positive value for G in at the end. Um, and now if we plug in Vy uh, over G there, we'll say this is equal to the square root of negative 2GH over G. And now, once again, this negative and this negative and the G are going to cancel out. So this is actually the square root of 2H over G. Where this simplification comes from is the square root of uh, square root of uh, negative 2GH over G is like the square root of negative 2gh over g squared. The g's are gonna cancel and you're gonna be left with the square root of negative 2h over g. That's that simplification. So now we have an expression for tp and our total time, t total, is equal to two times tp, which is equal to two times the square root of 2h over g. So this is our expression 
for the total time in terms of the height with a known quantity G, which is gonna be 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, here's where it gets fun. We can solve this expression for H. So if we take T, T, T and square that, square both sides, we're gonna be left with, oh, we have that factor of two as well, sorry. So if we take uh, one half T, T, so we've moved the two over, and now we want to square that, and then that's gonna leave us with two H over G, and now we just solve for H. So this is gonna be multiplied by G, so it's G times one half T, T squared, and then divide by two, and that's gonna give us H. So simplifying this a little bit, we find that H is equal to one half squared is one fourth, one fourth times one half is one eighth, and we have a factor of G, and our total time squared. All right, so now we can substitute values in. So we have one eighth times 9.8 meters per second squared. And we wanna multiply this by four minutes squared. And this will give us a value of about 70,600 meters. So in order for Ashton Hall to take four minutes to jump up off of his, uh, his pool ledge into the pool, he would have to achieve a height of 70,600 meters. Um, which, I mean, honestly, if you've seen him, he kind of looks like he could jump that high. <laughs> He's very, very, very muscular. Um, so possibly not unrealistic. Uh, but, um, you know, he might have a better shot if he's not working in Earth's gravity, which is another interesting thing we can do here. So we've calculated this expression, this T, T is equal to uh, two times the square root of two H over G. But there's another interesting question we can ask, which is, let's assume he jumped a normal height. In the video, it looks like he jumped about four feet off the ground, maybe. Uh, it's a little hard to tell, but we can just work with four feet as an estimate. If we say H equals four feet, and we still want our TT to be four minutes, is there a place in the solar system where G could be uh, a different value, this acceleration due to gravity, is there a different place in the solar system where G could be weak enough that uh, the time it takes him is really four minutes for a realistic jump height? So Earth's gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's because it has a mass of about 10 to the 24 kilograms. Uh, but if you add more mass to the Earth, it's gonna have a stronger pull of gravity and that will increase the acceleration object's field. So Jupiter, for example, has a mass of, uh, oh, Jupiter has a much larger mass than the Earth, and so as a result, um, you feel like you weigh a lot more on the Earth because you accelerate on Jupiter than you do on the Earth because the acceleration due to gravity is so much stronger, it's so much faster. Um, so is there a place in the solar system that we, that would, you know, we could figure this out? Um, and it turns out you'd have to go pretty small, right? Because the Earth, uh, you know, it would take him just a couple seconds to make that jump on Earth at a height of four feet. So you'd have to go much, much, much smaller than the Earth to make it work. Uh, and you'd have to go pretty small and we could try to figure out how small that is. So given this expression, we can calculate what G must be. Um, so let's solve this expression for G. So we just need to, again, divide by two, one half TT, and now we need to square everything again, divide by two once more, but this time we're gonna also divide by H, and we need to take the whole thing and, and invert that, uh, take the reciprocal, uh, and this will give us our expression for G. Now, we know what TT is, we, we want it to be four minutes, because we're still playing that joke, and we know what H is, we're gonna say it's about four feet, but you can redo this calculation if you want with whatever height you think is more, you know, you can estimate from the video. Um, and this G here, that's what we'll calculate. And so it turns out if you do this calculation, it, you're gonna end up needing an acceleration due to gravity of about 1.7 times 10 to the minus four meters per second squared, which is much, much smaller. It's four orders of magnitude smaller than uh, four to five orders of magnitude smaller than the Earth's acceleration due to gravity. So is there a place in the solar system where you would feel something like that? Um, and it turns out, yes. So comets and asteroids are a good example of objects that are so small that their pull of gravity is very weak. Um, so an example would be comet uh, 67P uh, Turyumov. I'm super sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. 
And now it has a radius of about two kilometers and a mass of about one kilo. Uh, sorry, sorry, about one, 10 to the 13 kilos. Reading my notes wrong. 10 to the 13 kilos. And so if we calculate its acceleration due to gravity using Newton's formula, we find that it is about 1.7 times 10 to the minus four meters per second squared. So this object is bang on this uh, comet. It has a surface gravity that is about bang on for what we need to achieve in order to uh, create this um, <laughs> four minute fall <laughs> jump time. So if Ashton Hall were to do his jump on a comet like of this size, if he were to jump at about a height of four feet on a comet of this size, it really could take him about four minutes to go up and then back down again, which is pretty funny to think about. Anyway, uh, that's all I got for you guys. I think it's just a really fun little calculation to do. Um, thank you so much for watching and uh, see you in the next one.